Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Jennifer Taylor, and today I'm going to show you how to analyze multiple response nominal data in SPSS. But before we hop into SPSS, I first want to review really quickly just about scales of measurement. And so um, multiple response nominal variables are a subsect of the nominal variable category. And I'll talk about how they're different in just a second, but this is the lowest level of scales, meaning that you cannot transform this scale into anything um, other than what it is. So with ratio, you could transform it into interval, ordinal, or nominal data. With an interval um, scale, you could transform it into an ordinal or nominal scale. With an ordinal scale, you could uh, transform it into a nominal scale. So with a multiple response nominal, it's still a nominal variable and we cannot transform it into anything. So what exactly is a multiple response nominal data point? Well, it's a variant of the nominal scale. It allows respondents to select multiple answers. And so these are always those questions you see that say, check all that apply. And we use these when respondents have more than one answer or it doesn't fit neatly into a category. Um, it helps avoid confusing or insulting a respondent by allowing them to be able to clearly identify the appropriate attribute. Um, this is also a multiple response nominal variable is also a way, a more efficient way to ask multiple nominal questions when these questions are the same. And what do I mean by that? Well, you could ask the question, have you seen advertisements for pets and more on billboards? Yes or no. Have you seen advertisements for pets and more in magazines? Yes or no. And then you could repeat this question six more times to assess newspapers, online, public transportation, radio, TV, and other. Or you could use a multiple response uh, question and say, where have you seen advertisements for pets and more? Check all that apply. And then the respondent can select if they've seen them on billboards, magazines, newspapers, online, public transportation, radio, TV, or other. And they can select all of the ways uh, and all the places that they've seen advertisements. So it becomes more efficient. Um, so what statistics can you report for multiple uh, response nominal variables? Well, it's just like nominal variables. So you can report mode, frequency count, and frequency percentage. So let's jump into how do you analyze multiple response nominal data in SPSS. Um, I have the pets and more SPSS data set that I created for you so that you can walk, um, you can uh, walk along on this journey with me step by step to learn how to do this. So you can find this data set in the description box below, or if you're in one of my classes, it'll be in your learning management system, either Blackboard or Canvas. Um, but download that video and then let's go and start analyzing multiple response nominal data in SPSS. So when you open the file, should look like this. And I am going to open up the labels so you can see the questions that were asked and also the values so you can see the categorical answers that were given. So as you'll notice with uh, my variable names, I have named them ORD1, RAT1, NOM1, INV1, and these stand for the types of scales. I don't typically name my variables this way. I would name them something related to the question. So for this first ORD1, I would have named it visits. Um, but because of this tutorial, I try to make it easier for everyone and for myself uh, when analyzing all this data and sharing it with you. So ORD means ordinal, RAT means ratio, NOM means nominal, and INV means interval. All right, so if you've watched my nominal variable video, you know that the easiest way to identify a nominal variable is to look and see, okay, what is the question? Is the question, and then what is the answers? Are the answers, you have the question, are the answers hierarchical in any way? 
um, are they just or are they just categories of um, answers? So in this case, for what was your primary reason for visiting Pets and More today? Uh, the answers were, I wanted to make a purchase, I was just browsing, I was researching a product or service or other, please specify. And these are just categories. Um, there's no hierarchical order to them. One is not better than the other. Um, and it's a question where you can only choose one answer. So that's what makes it a traditional nominal variable. Now you'll see for this nom2, it has an underscore one, underscore two, underscore three, underscore four, underscore five, underscore six. And this underscore of one, two, three is a clue that you could have a multiple response nominal variable. Now you will also see this underscore when you're dealing with matrix questions from Qualtrics. So this could be a, um, say you had a Likert scale and it was the same scale and you were asking four different questions and you put it into a matrix on Qualtrics, um, a qual then you would also see these underscores. Um, but how do you know the difference between an interval um, or a nominal where it's multiple response nominal is again, you've got to look at the scales. And for multiple response nominals, they're always going to have one category that's given a value of one. All others are given zero. And this simply means that any um, respondent who has a one value, that means they selected that attribute. Um, so here for ethnicity, for uh, choose one or more races that you consider yourself to be, they could have selected white, black, or African American, American Indian, or Alaska Native, Asian, Native Hawaiian, or Pacific Islander, Hispanic, Latino, or Spanish origin. And um, they could select in multiple, they could have selected all. But if it has a one in it, it is, it means that they have the attribute. Now, if you remember what I was talking about with you could ask this question two ways. You could ask it as a nominal variable where we could have asked yes or no. Um, do you can um, do you consider yourself to be white? And they could have said yes or no. SPSS has taken the check all that apply answer and turned it back into a nominal variable. And so that's why we have the ones and the zeros. And what we want, what we need from this uh, variable in order to do this analysis is we need a frequency table that includes all these responses. And we wanna create a chart that has all those responses because as it is, SPSS is going to report on each one of these as an individual variable. And so any charts are gonna be one or zero charts rather than looking at a comparison as to how many people selected um, that attribute. Um, so how do you do that? Well, let me show you how, and it's, it's very different from analyzing um, nominal variable but we're still going to start by clicking on analyze. So click on analyze and then go all the way down to the bottom to this multiple response. And then once you click the multiple response, you're going to go over to define variable set. So you'll notice you have frequency and cross tabs, but they're grayed out. You cannot do anything until you define the variable set. So let's define the variable set. Press click, or sorry, click. All right, and then this window pops up and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna do display variable names. And then I'm gonna look for that multiple response nominal variable and I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna press shift and then I'm gonna click six and that way it captures all of them. And then I'm just gonna move it over to the variables in set. Now, if you remember, we talked about um, that anyone who reported that they had that attribute, they were given a count of one, and anyone that didn't respond had a zero. So in this count value for variables are coded as, we want to put a one because any variable that has a one here should be um, counted as that attribute. All right, so this is ethnicity. And now we can just click the add button. 
All right, and we are done. We can hit close. And you'll notice nothing happened here, but let's go back up to analyze. So click analyze, go all the way down to multiple response. And now our frequency and cross tabs are available to us. So let's click on frequencies. And let's move ethnicity over to tables four and let's click okay. And now that we have our frequency table, we need to create a chart because we want to present this in a presentation. All right, so you're going to double click the frequencies. And I'm going to open this all the way. Okay, so we have this chart the ethnicity frequencies. And in order to create, I'm sorry, we have this table. In order to create a chart, first we need to highlight the values of the attributes. So don't include the totals and don't include the, the title. You just want the values of each attribute. And the first thing we wanna do is sort it. So we're gonna go to edit and then sort rows and then um, I click descending because I want it largest to smallest. All right, so now we want to create our graph, our bar chart. So we're going to right click over this and we're going to create the graph. Now it's important that you have this highlighted. If it's not highlighted, this won't work properly, but we're going to make the bar chart and notice it's kind of quiet here. We want to go back over to our output. And this is our table, our chart. So let's double click on that chart because it's not very pretty, so let's make it pretty. All right, we're gonna click the title. Uh, so double click. And then do a click. All right. Okay, so we have changed the title. Uh, this variable name, the title pretty much says it all, so we're going to get rid of that. This values, we're actually talking about percentages here. So we're going to clean this up, percentages. And then we want to clean up each of these question names, these categories. We just want it to be the answer, not the question. So I'm just highlighting and deleting. Double clicking, highlighting, deleting double clicking, highlighting, deleting, double clicking, highlighting, deleting. All right, and so it looks much better. Let's highlight uh, the bars and then let's right click. And we're gonna go down to show data labels. And so now it has the data labels. Okay, so you need to get out of the <coughs> editor, get out of this editor, and we will go to the output and we want to control C and then we will go to our PowerPoint presentation. 
and we'll control V. I'll manipulate the size. Oops. It's very sensitive. Change the title. And then also notice that the data, data labels did not transfer. So you can, you gotta click on the data labels, make sure that they're all highlighted. And add data labels. And notice that it gives you your data labels that have uh, go out multiple decimal places. So you just click this, the bars, go down to number and I would love for this to be a percentage, but it does not transfer properly. It's one of the limitations of, of um, SPSS. Um, however, you can use, uh, you can put two decimal places. And since you have percentage that can tell people, um, otherwise you can just use count or you can create the chart in Excel. But this is how you do it in SPSS. And that is how you analyze multiple response nominal data in SPSS. I've ho I hope you've enjoyed this video. And um, if you've enjoyed it, please hit like. If you'd like to subscribe, you can click on the subscribe button. But other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Bye.